The U.S. is attempting to rein in the artificial intelligence race. Today, President Joe Biden announced seven leading tech companies, including Google, OpenAI, Meta, and Microsoft, have all agreed to voluntary safeguards. These commitments, which uh, the companies will implement immediately, underscore three fundamental principles. Safety, security, and trust. For more on this, Jeremy Harris is a co-founder of Gladstone AI, an artificial intelligence safety company. His team collaborates with researchers at some of those companies that signed on to these voluntary guidelines. He has also briefed senior members of Cabinet in the U.S. and Canada on the risks associated with the technology. Hello, thank you for being here. So let's start with the news. How significant is it that these companies have agreed to this? I think it's actually a really big deal um, and, and a really exciting one too. So what we have here is the, the latest essentially in a long series of moves the US government and other governments around the world, but especially the US government have been making on dealing with AI risk. And it really takes seriously some of the things that have been sort of like openly talked about in AI safety circles at the cutting edge labs for a long time. Um, it's just really cool to see it now kind of get hammered out as a document, as a clear concrete initial agreement uh, it is voluntary, but it does seem to be clear that it's the initial step, the initial inroads into a set of more like compulsory measures that the U.S. government mm -hmm. will uh, look to impose. Mm -hmm. There's also a little bit of an interesting dichotomy on that, on that note. Uh, on the one hand, these companies are competing with each other to develop this technology. I, on the other hand, they're just volunteering to try to keep it safe. So the standards themselves, how do you uh, evaluate whether or not they're good enough? I think it's a really good question. And, you know, people rightly and appropriately raise the question of like regulatory capture, right? We've got all these, these top big tech companies telling us we want you to regulate us like this and not like this. I think it's a valid concern. Um, but this really reflects a conversation that's been ongoing in the AI safety circles for a long time. Uh, the actors who are at the table here, I think, are very sincere. And, you know, when you look at the, the kinds of policies that are being put in place, they're things that these labs have been doing voluntarily already. You know, checking their AI systems, for example, for signs that they could be used to do things like design new biopathogens or design new cyber attacks and stuff that we essentially really need as we start that march towards ultimately human level uh, AI, which is something that a lot of these big uh, AI companies and their leaders have been saying is pretty, I mean, if not imminent, uh, coming in the not too distant future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to admit, sometimes the language surrounding the risks uh, appears to be downright apocalyptic uh, with talk of an existential threat to humanity if, if it really does uh, go off the rails, I suppose. How serious is the risk here should those guardrails not be put in place? I think based on all the information that we have available right now, the risk actually seems quite real. Um, you know, this is something that I've been working on for the last, uh, you know, three or four years and that these labs have been working on for longer. There's a whole bunch of evidence that suggests that as AI systems get more and more intelligent, more and more capable and context aware, eventually they start to invent dangerously creative solutions that kind of achieve their programmed objectives, but that have side effects that, that could be really right, downright catastrophic. And so the, the domain of sort of dangerously creative AI systems that we may be about to start to build, depending on who you ask, uh, seems like a very serious risk class. And it, it is well studied, though it's not necessarily well understood. There's a lot of uncertainty about what kinds of systems pose these risks, how close they may be, and so on. But, uh, but legitimate, it really does seem to be. Mm. Well, I wanted to uh, take a step back and maybe ask you to draw that theme out a little bit more. And, uh, you know, wh where is AI at this very moment? We hear talk about, quote unquote, human level AI. Uh, these are stories that the science fiction film industry have been spinning for years. You can think of iRobot, The Matrix, The Terminator and things like that. What does that mean and, and how close are we to, to reaching that sort of technology? Yeah, and that, that sci-fi stuff really kind of makes this harder to talk about, right? Because we all want to bucket it in our minds as this like sci-fi thing that couldn't possibly be true. Um, yeah, unfortunately, in a sense, uh, it seems like researchers may have cracked a big part of the code toward making AI systems that have greater and greater capabilities that may extend up to and beyond human level intelligence. This involves essentially finding ways to channel huge amounts of computational resources towards these systems as they learn through a glorified process of like trial and error to find strategies that humans would never think of. And so um, the, the challenge is that the, the recipe, the sort of so-called AI scaling recipe that seems to work so well to build so many of these cutting edge systems 
like GPT-4, like ChatGPT, is now known basically by everyone. And it's a pretty simple process. We've already seen it bear fruit. We know that um, AI systems like ChatGPT and GPT-4 can outperform human competitive programmers, essay writers, and so on across a wide range of tasks. And, and these are things like you know, 20 minutes ago, like I'm old enough to remember when that was not supposed to be possible. Mm. You know, the goalposts have shifted so much uh, that we're now really facing that reality. And, and we have an ever widening range of of tasks that these systems can perform at human level or beyond, many times all at the same time, like one system can do them all. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned the goalpost kind of rapidly shifting as the technology develops. So what are you looking for next in terms of policy responses to these emerging AI capabilities? Well, I think one encouraging move is the one made by the US government with that kind of shared statement. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the idea of red teaming. This is something that's come up a lot. OpenAI brought in external people to evaluate their uh, latest model, GPT-4, to look at, you know, can this thing deceive human beings? Can it uh, design bioweapons? Can it design cyber attacks? I think that's a great, you know, an important thing to do, bring in external auditors, not internal, but external, uh, who are, you know, who have the right incentives. And beyond that, I think we need, need to start looking at things like governing processing power. These massive processors that are powering the development of these AI systems, you know, if these systems can start to carry out very powerful cyber attacks, if they can start to design bioweapons, mm -hmm. you know, we have to start asking ourselves, like, is this stuff effectively something like analogous to mm -hmm. fissile material in the nuclear supply yeah. chain? And I want to jump That's in just, just one yeah. on one of those points, because if this hyper-intelligent technology is going to or potentially could reach the stage where it could develop bioweapons, uh, what should the government do? Well, I think at that point, it's very difficult to separate the AI system from the bioweapon itself, in a sense, right? You have this, like, this thing that makes easy to design bioweapons or to design whatever malicious attack. And so at that point, you have to start looking at, okay, what is the liability regime? If a cyber attack or a, or a bioweapon attack, as you say, does happen, like who's to blame? You know, is, are we looking at joint and several liabilities? Is basically everybody liable in the entire chain? Um, so, so there's a whole thing for our, our justice system to figure out there, not to mention our public safety organizations in preventing that from happening. But yeah, the fallout, I think, right now is sort of like an open question when it comes to liability. And things like uh, Bill C-27's AI and Data Act try to kind of start to grapple with that, though we're not quite there yet. And there they're trying to impose criminal um, kind of penalties on people who recklessly uh, release AI systems. So that's kind of a start, but we have a lot of work to do to figure out exactly where liability lives and how to prevent this stuff from happening in the first place. Okay, Jeremy, you've certainly given me a lot to think about. You've also given me yet another thing to lose sleep over. We do have to leave it there, so thank you. Jeremy Harris is a co-founder of Gladstone AI, an artificial intelligence safety company.